Good morning, Washington Church. Will you stand and join us in the call to worship? <laughs> All right, let's join together in the call to worship. How great is our God. How awesome are your deeds. Lord, you are gracious and compassionate. You are my rock, my shield, and my fortress. Therefore, we will sing your praises and speak of your goodness. Jesus, you are worthy of all worship and praise. Reveal yourself to us.
this time, I'm going to invite you to greet others around you. All right, everyone, please have a seat. Good morning, Washington Church. We are so glad to have you in person or online. My name is Miranda, and I'm going to make a couple announcements. So we would like to welcome all the new people visiting today. If you are new, we have these welcome cards we'd love for you to fill out, and then you can give it to me, or you can put it in the black offering boxes. Um, we also have online a welcome card you can fill out if you're, if you're viewing online. We also have giving available in those same black boxes by the exits and entrances, or online at washingtonchurch.org slash give, or if you have a bulletin, there's a QRC code you can click as well. We have Encounter Night coming up on July 17th, next Sunday at 5.30 p.m. Um, so we're going to have a missionary intercessor and co-founder of the Monroe House of Prayer come and speak to us. Uh, this is just a great opportunity to come on Sundays and um, experience a different move of God and hear how people have personally experienced Holy Spirit and then to practice encountering God. And then we will have a special worship night on Friday, July 20. Second at 6.30 p.m. at Scott Peck's house. There's also his address and details in the bulletin, um, or you can find Scott if he's here and ask him. And then um, you can also connect with Pat Shaw right here if you have any questions. And if you're a kid, K-5, through five, you can go ahead and head out this far door here. And then last, we just want to invite everyone here for a prayer. So there will be people standing around the outside um, with, how can I pray for your lanterns? Um, so we just invite you to seek them and to use that resource as well. Thanks. Let's stand and continue to worship. visual person, just picture that. Picture staring into his eyes.
sing this, and I know it's hard. And we don't know what the fire's going to look like. We don't know what it's going to bring. But we're going to ask that the Lord would refine us. That the Lord would make us more like him as we walk through the fires and through the valleys.
that you've walked us through the fires. Jesus, help us to know your voice. Help us to know the goodness of your voice. Father, you are good. And you are always good. In every circumstance, you are always good. So Jesus, today we just say that we trust you. <laughs> Wherever you lead us, whatever you walk us through, Jesus, we trust you. Jesus, you can have it all. Because we trust you with it all. Because you're the creator and the sustainer of all things. Father, we just thank you today. We just thank you today for always being good. Continue to show us your nature. Show us your goodness. Show us your kindness. That we can trust you more and more. That we can know you more and more. Father, you are good. And we love you. And it's in your precious Son's name we pray all these things. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, Washington. Thanks, Jenny. My name is Corey. Uh, I'm the staff gopher here at Washington. Um, and I have, uh, for those of you that don't know, Pastor Jimmy and his family are on an extended vacation. They're going to be gone through the month of July. So in your private prayer time, I would highly encourage us praying for rest and revitalization for the Kroll family. Um, but I have the immense privilege of introducing our, our guest speaker, um, this is a man who I got to intern with for a year in college, uh, who taught me a ton about living by faith, uh, the grind of ministry, um, and how to worship God with everything you have. Uh, so if you guys could join me in welcoming Bishop Chris Rawl. Thank you, brother. Amen. Hi, everybody. Hey, uh, good morning to everyone. I am, I am honored to be here today. I am honored to be in such powerful worship. And um, I love the presence of the Lord. I am, I am addicted to the presence of the Lord. I love it. Uh, that's all I know. All I know is the presence of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you why. When I was three years old, um, believe it or not, the Lord called me to preach. Um, and I, I, I heard his voice. I, I know it so clear. I know the voice of the Lord so clear. And when I was three years old, I heard the Lord say to me, go preach my word. And I ran out of the room and I went to my mother and I told my mother what I heard. And she just kind of looked at me, but I told her what I had heard. And I've been in church all my life. And I didn't grow up, I didn't have a father. My father was murdered and I was one. So I always grew up with this longing for this father. But even at three years old, the Lord let me know that he was my father. And he was everything that I needed. So from that day to this one, I've always been peculiar. I've always been a little different. Um, the teenagers call it weird. It's cool. Um, but I've always been different, but I've always known the voice of the Lord. And even at three years old, my mother used to, and I don't know if anybody remember uh, Reverend James Cleveland, 
but back in the day in the 80s my mom used to listen to a lot of gospel and and there was a song that James Cleveland had which was God has smiled on me and it just simply said God has smiled on me he has set me free oh God has smiled on me he's been good to me and every time she would put that on I would run to the top of the stairs and sit there all by myself and I would just cry and I would weep at three and four years old and I would lift my hands and my sister used to run and say mama Chris is at the stairs crying he's crying and one day she was at the bottom of the steps and she looked up at me she said Chris why are you crying and I told her I said I can feel something that I can't explain that's at three and I've always had that feeling of the presence of God in my life even growing up as a teenager I used to go sit on top of the roof we used to have these antennas on the back of our house and I used to climb the tower and I used to get on top of the roof and I would sit on the roof and lay back and ask God about the plan for my life and I would always do that and he and I always had this connection at 11 12 13 years old I would go somewhere quiet and I would walk and I would just talk to God I can be in this whole room full of people and I can close my eyes and none of you are here and it's just me and God that's the relationship I have with him so I feel something in worship brother Corey said he taught me how to worship I I, I wasn't trying to teach him how to worship. All I do is live this life. This is something I do in my kitchen. This is something I do in my car. This is something I do in the shower. This is something I do at home. I don't need a soul. All I need is a song. And certain songs that come up, and see, I'm old school, and there's certain songs that would say songs like, Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup, I lift it up now, make me whole. Or I would sing songs like, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. And he's just the same as his holy name ask me the reason why i love him so it's cause jesus is the sweetest name i know jesus okay let me stop yeah see i i can do it all day because it's the song of my heart it's the song i've lived it's the song of who i am so when I cry and everybody says, oh God, he's crying again, it's because it's just me and him. I have this connection with him that I can't explain. I'm his David. And he is my savior. So, worship is key. Let me give you something real quick before we get into the word of God. And I'm not going to be before you long. And I know you're like, whatever. But it's cool. You know how us preachers do. But let me say this to you. I learned something for those of you, as, as Sister Bridget was talking about, that you're scared of that song of, of being purified in the fire. Let me give you a nugget. And, you'll, and play, I pray you'll never forget this. There is a difference between a consuming fire and a refiner's fire. A consumer's fire has come to take you completely out. It's, 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 it's totally meant to consume. It is meant to burn completely away. There is nothing left. And God will do that in our life. He'll send a consuming fire into our life, and he'll take out of us what he cannot use. He'll take away from us what does not give him glory. Right? But then the Lord sends a refiner's fire. 
A refiner's fire comes to refine us. It comes to make us. It comes to make us stronger. It comes to build us. It comes to give us something that we would not normally have unless we do go through the fire. So in essence, you're telling me, Bishop, the fire is necessary. It is necessary. I used to be a jeweler. Here's the nugget. I used to be a jeweler. I used to work from Osterman Jewelers in the 90s when I had hair. I used to, you know, flat top fade. I thought I was kid and play. Hola, hola, and some of y'all too young to know who I'm talking about. You know, <laughs> right? So I used to, you know, I used to be a jeweler. I used to work for Osterman Jewelers, and I had my wife's second ring made. And the jeweler told me, he said, bring me all your old gold. Bring me all your old gold so I didn't have to buy new gold. And he said, bring me all your old gold. And I did. And that particular day, the, the, the jeweler that was there was there to make my, my wife's ring. And so he took all this old gold and he puts it into this, 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 like this oven, this pot. And he puts it all in and he adds more gold. And then he melts it all down and he just continues to keep taking a look at it. And then he does this for a while. And then he takes this, this skimmer, kind of a tool, and then he opens the lid and he starts to skim the top. And then he dumps off and he skins the top. And I said, okay, what are you doing? He said, the more I heat it up, the more fire it is, the carbon starts to come to the top of it. And, and, and the, that's the little black pieces and I have to skim it off and make sure that the gold is pure. And so I said, okay. He said, I'm just refining the gold. I said, okay. I said, well, is it done when you, you, you go to skim it and there's no more carbon? He said, no. I said, he said, it's almost there. And I said, well, well, you would think it would be done when there's nothing left in it. And he said, well, no, not yet. I said, okay, so when is it done? When is it done when is it done and it's ready to be molded? When is it ready to be made? Here's the key, and hope you catch this. He said, the key is, I know when it's ready, when I can open the lid and I can see my reflection in it. I know... In the fire, when we go through this fire, and you want to know, when am I going to come out of this fire? When am I going to, when, watch this, when God can look down at you and see his reflection in you. When your answers aren't answers of complaining, but your answers are answers of David, I'll bless the Lord at all times. He can see himself in you now. Make sense? When you can lift your hands and praise God and worship God despite of what we're going through, that's how he sees himself. When our answers become his answers. When our reactions are his reactions and not ours. That's how we know we are just about ready to come out of what we're in. Somebody say amen. Amen. Y'all wanted to say it. You was a little hesitating. You was a little scared. So I just, I just, I helped you. All right. All right, go to Mark chapter 1 real fast. And I just want to help you with this. And I'm not going to be before you long. But let me give you some nuggets. Somebody say nuggets. I'm going to give you some nuggets. And hopefully this will make sense to you. And hopefully, and giving honor to God who is the head of my life. And giving honor to my, my good friend, my dear brother, Pastor Jimmy. I am honored today to help and come serve the people of God and God himself. And I am so honored today. You could have chose anybody. You could have said to anybody, uh, we, we would like so-and-so. We, we don't necessarily want Pastor Chris. But I thank you. I appreciate it. All right. So here are the rules of engagement. You got to say something to me. That's the rules. You got to talk to me. I know you don't talk to Jimmy, but you're going to have to talk to Chris. You're going to have to say something, man, because listen... Church folk are scary. I'm telling you, church people are scary. They are the hardest crowd to come before because they look at you like you better say something good. <laughs> right? They don't smile very often. They all like to look deep and mystical and mystified. 
But me, I like to laugh, I like to talk, I like people to talk back to me. And so therefore, I know that you are engaged. I wore this loud color so you, if you didn't hear me, you saw me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know somebody was like, he looks like Kermit. I get it. But I, I did it so therefore I'd get your attention. All right. So we're, we're talking about the kingdom of God. Say the kingdom of God. Now, I'm going to give you some revelation because I'm a revelatory speaker. I am a revelatory speaker. I depend on revelation. I depend on looking beyond the words that we see. I'm a revelatory speaker. Pastor Jimmy, he's, he, he's a little different than me. He's a topical speaker. He understands, and he goes deep, and he understands information. And I marvel even at him. And he sent me some stuff online that I told him, I said, oh, I'm going to use this forever. And so I love his information. I'm just a little bit different. And so I want to just show you some things that the Lord has shown me. So please don't expect me to preach like Pastor Jimmy. Please don't expect Pastor Jimmy to preach like me. Please don't expect no one else because here's the thing. The Bible declares in Corinthians that we have diversities of gifts but the same God. Amen? Amen. And so here it is. I want to read something to you. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. And, and, and I'm going to deal with today uh, the topic for today, which is um, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. I want to give you some understanding in what the text is talking about. Let's look at St. Mark chapter 1. Let's look at um, verse 1. And I just want to read some things to you. In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Is it, am I right? Yeah. In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written... Uh, in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out uh, to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whom sandal strap I am not even worthy to, to stoop down and loose. I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Verse 9, And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee, baptized by John in the Jordan, and immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting, and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven and said, You are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Verse 12, Immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness, 40 days tempted by Satan, and was with uh, wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. Verse 14, now after John was put to prison, put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom, here it is, of the kingdom of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. Father, we thank you and we glorify you for your word today. It is already bread. It is already manna. Father, continue let it to be life unto us, your people. Take us from glory to glory. Take us to a new understanding in you, a deeper, deeper depth, God. And I thank you today. Let us not just be hearers, but let us be doers, God. And we thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. Bless these, your people. Somebody said amen. amen. Now understand here, Mark records this. Uh, Mark, whose Roman name is actually Marcus. Some may not understand or know that. But it is a very common name. Uh, 
and we have no reason yet to think that anything else that other than he was birthed a Jew and just as like when Paul took the Roman name of Paul or Saul took the Roman name as Paul um, Mark or Marcus have taken on the Roman name of, of Mark his Jewish name some theologians believe is actually Mordecai I want you to understand what is happening here that Mark is recording this 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 event this occurrence and Mark is actually uh, uh, well let me back up not Mark but actually uh, John is the apprentice to Peter and as John is the apprentice to Peter he is preparing him and showing him that it's about ministry he writes in Timothy he said that he, he Peter writes he says that that he is beneficial to me in ministry John is beneficial to him in ministry. I want you to notice something. Now, we're talking about the kingdom of God. He gets baptized. Jesus gets baptized by the Holy Spirit, according to verse 10. And I want you to notice something. You have to pay attention to certain occurrences in the word of God. He gets baptized by the Holy, in, in the Holy Spirit by John, and he comes up out of the water, and the Bible says that the Holy Spirit a, descends upon him like a dove then notice what happens next you got to notice what happens next after he, the Holy Spirit comes upon him then he is compelled to go into the wilderness he is compelled to go into the wilderness there's two things you need to pay attention to this this part right here the first thing is here it is when he is now being empowered for ministry, he is being empowered, he has been given the, 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 the power of the Holy Spirit for ministry. There's two things you need to pay attention here to. The first thing you need to pay attention to is when God calls you to ministry, he doesn't call you to the pulpit. He First, he calls you to the wilderness. Oh, you missed it. See, it, it doesn't come from Oral Roberts University. It doesn't come from the Moody Bible Institute. When he calls you into ministry, he prepares you for ministry, the first mission, the first pulpit you have is the wilderness. Think about it. It's not me. We just read it. He calls us to the wilderness. People think I just like Beyonce, just woke up like this. <laughs> I promise I won't do that again. Let's... <laughs> You're like, man, he's too big for that. I get it. Listen, <laughs> you caught it. I didn't wake up like this. I didn't, I didn't, Washington, you've been, oh, come on, Washington. You've been with me since the very beginning. You've been with me for the last 14 years. Woo! The only time Washington wasn't with me is when I was at the mission for six years, preaching to homeless people, drug addicts, prostitutes, gangbangers, runaways, throwaways. I was in the wilderness. People laughed at me. But guess what? He said, there is a call in the wilderness. The call is for the wilderness. That's why God would, come on, man. That's why God will, God will uproot Corey and send him to the north end. Because this here is Shangri-La. This here is Club Med. This here is Palm Springs. This is the part where everybody's comfortable. And I'm not talking about Washington. I'm just talking about church. I'm talking about the building. This is where everyone's comfortable. But can you do ministry in the uncomfortable place? In the wilderness? See, we think it's about this, but it's not. This is, here it is. This is where we come get filled up and then sent back out. Right. You don't just go to the gas station and sit there and just, <laughs> and just be like, I'm going to go do something one day. Right? But you go to the gas station with the hopes of being, getting filled, right? And then going to your desired destination. Going to your place 
where you have goals and things, right? This is where Pastor Jimmy and the rest of the leaders empower you, encourage you to go out beyond the four walls and make a difference. Because in here, we're preaching to the choir. But this is where we come and let iron sharpeneth iron. This is where we come and encourage one another. This is where we come and get prepared and empowered for ministry. So now Jesus is being empowered for ministry. So first point A, he gets empowered by the Holy Spirit and then hits the wilderness. He didn't hit the, he didn't hit the circuit. He hit the wilderness. Here's the second thing we have to understand this. So then he gets empowered by the Holy Spirit, and notice what happens next. He then gets compelled by the Holy Spirit to go and to be tempted of the enemy. He is now, this is his first act now of overcoming Satan. This is his first act once he gets empowered. Notice what I'm just, uh, you got to catch this. He gets empowered by the Holy Spirit and then he gets led into the wilderness to overcome and overthrow Satan. To defeat sin. So what are you saying, Bishop? Here it is. Catch this. You cannot defeat what you're going through without the Holy Spirit. Point blank, period. Notice what happened. It was the Holy Spirit that gave him the power to overcome the enemy. It wasn't just salvation. Let me give you another one so you don't think it's me. In Acts chapter 2, and the Holy Spirit is released amongst the people and at the day of Pentecost, right? Remember that? Remember what happens next. It's then, only after the introduction of the Holy Spirit, then they were equipped to go out. Understand this statement here. You can never beat addiction without Holy Ghost. You can never overcome depression without the Holy Spirit. You can never overcome unforgiveness without the Holy Spirit. You can never overcome your past without the Holy Spirit because it is the Holy Spirit that gives you the ability and the power to over overcome that. It is, the only, it is only the Holy Spirit that gives you the ability and the power to say these words here, I forgive you. Does it make sense? When we do it in our own accord, guess what? We fail every single time. But when we do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit gives me the ability to walk that thing out. The Holy Spirit gives me the ability to talk that thing out. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. That's only one or two, but he does many things. But so now what happens is, let's keep reading. He says, he, 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 he's, he's, he's talking about the kingdom of God. Watch this. The kingdom of God is different than the kingdom of heaven. Because, watch this, the kingdom of heaven is the spirit realm where God reigns as king. But the kingdom of God is the fulfillment of God's will for man here on earth. The kingdom of heaven is where God reigns. But the kingdom of God is the fulfillment. Someone say fulfillment. The kingdom of God is the fulfillment of God's will for us here on earth. It is the fulfillment of God's will for us. It is the fulfillment. What is the kingdom of God? Bishop, what is the kingdom of God? It is the fulfillment of God's will for us here on earth. It is the fulfillment. Let me give you scripture. Let thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Let thy kingdom come, thy will be done, right? On earth as it is in heaven. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the will of God for us. It is the will of God for the person next to you. It is the kingdom of God. Let me give you a a short-term understanding. And this is the revelation God gave me. What is the kingdom of God? It is the gauge that he gauges everything by, and it is the lens from which he looks everything through. (laughs) I'm going to say it to you again. The kingdom of God is the gauge from which he gauges everything by. And it is the lens from which God looks through for us. It's the kingdom of God. Okay, but let me, let, me, let me tell you, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is what he's saying in this, is that the kingdom of God is present. Go to Luke chapter 17. I'm more than halfway through. Go to Luke 17 and 21. I just show it to you. It says that the kingdom of God is at hand. At hand means the kingdom of God is present. Someone says present. You won't be able to say here it is or it's over there. For the kingdom of God is among you. The new King James says the kingdom of God is in you. The kingdom of God is in you. Every person sitting here has the kingdom of God within them. So when he says the kingdom of God is at hand, can I tell you a secret? When you go to Walmart, the kingdom of God is at hand. When you go to Speedway, it's at hand. Oh, you're going to catch this tomorrow, maybe. When no matter where you go, the kingdom of God is at hand. It is within you. It is, can I tell you what it is? Again, it is the will of God for you. It is the will of God for your brother. It is the will of God for your neighbor. Let me tell you what the kingdom of God is. Here it is. It is the lens from which you love thy neighbor as thyself. That's the kingdom of God. (laughs) Somebody talking back to me. The kingdom of God is love thy neighbor as thyself. That's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, mind, body, and soul. That's the kingdom of God. Here it is. Can I give you another kingdom of God? Beloved, I wish that you would be in health and prosper even as your soul prosper. That's the kingdom of God. Here is the kingdom of God. I wish that no one would perish but all would be saved. That's the kingdom of God. That's what his will is for us. That's what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is be in health and prosper, even as your soul prospers. Balance is the kingdom of God for us. Do you, do you, have you released the will of God in your life? Have you released the kingdom of God in your life? That's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is at hand. Let me give you another one. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is in your hands. The kingdom of God is in your hands. When you see your brother down, pick him up. He's in your hands. That's the kingdom of God. It is in your hand. What do you mean in my hand? Because it is up to us. Some, the only God that some people will ever see is in us. So when you know there's a need, it's in your hand. It is up to show love to those that other people can't show love to. It's in our hand. It is us to show forgiveness to other people that other people can't show forgiveness. It's in our hands now. It's in our hands. 
Then he said, the kingdom of God is in our hands. Then he told us to repent, right? So let me explain to you repentance. Are we fulfilling God's will in our lives? Are we fulfilling God's will in others? It is at our hands. Repentance prepares us for war and victory. But it also prepares us to believe the gospel. Now understand, by repentance we give glory to the creator because he forgives us. But also by faith we give glory to the redeemer because it's the redeemer who saves us. So, here it is, when much is given, much is required. The same grace God gives us, that's the same grace we have to show to others out there. See, we used to think, especially in in, in the Pentecostal church, much is given, much is required. We think that meant gifting. No, that's grace. That's grace. That's grace. We can't, as believers, say stuff like, she hurt me or he hurt me. I don't know if I can forgive them. Then God says, well, you've hurt me. I don't know if I can forgive you. <laughs> because much is given, much is required. We have to give out that same love and that same grace. Here it is. Repentance will quicken our faith. Now, you got to catch this. you got to catch this. Repentance, when he says, for the kingdom of God is at hand, he said, repent and believe. Right? So, let's be honest. We think it's just sinners who need to repent. But Paul said, I die daily. There's some stuff you thought about we need to say, God, I'm sorry. There's some people you thought about, I'm just going to get her told and never got her told. You still need to say sorry to God. <laughs> so repentance is not a one-time thing. It's an, it's, a, it's an everyday thing. It's things that I have to say, Lord, if I've said anything, done anything, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry, God. And then there's repentance doesn't mean that I've necessarily sinned every day. I mean, even though I'm a sinner, saved by grace, but I, you know, I think things, or I may say things that I shouldn't say. I, I ain't always bishop. Sometimes I tell a crazy joke that I go, did I say that? Don't act like, uh uh-uh. And if I stub my toe, I'm not going to recite the Ten Commandments. (laughs) Yes, I said it. There's some stuff I got to say, oh, God, forgive me, but that hurt, right? But believe. The belief part is I believe in whom I've asked for forgiveness from, right? I like this. Watch this. Repentance quickens my faith. It quickens my faith. It, 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 it gives my faith a vitamin C booster. It quickens me, Right? But faith makes repentance evangelical. Repentance quickens my faith. But faith makes repentance evangelical. So what do you mean, Bishop? Repentance quickens my faith. But because I've been redeemed and because I've been forgiven, And because I've experienced the grace and the love of God, now I can evangelize to someone else of the goodness of Jesus. I can evangelize that if God forgave me, he could forgive you. Do I, am I talking to anybody? I can, now I can evangelize and sell and tell of the goodness of Jesus because let me, let me see if I got any real people in here. When I think about where God has brought me from, When I think about, I say this all the time, my brother, I may not be what you think I ought to be, but I sure bless God I'm not what I used to be. 
Anybody? Any takers? Any takers? I may not be what you think I ought to be, but I sure thank God I'm not what I used to be. So now I can go tell somebody of the goodness of Jesus because I've experienced his redeeming power. But now that I've experienced it, I got to go tell it. Now that I've experienced it, I got to go share it with someone. Now that I've experienced the redeeming grace, power, glory of God, being baptized in his presence, now I got to go share it. Now I got to tell somebody that's what it means by when I share it, when I share it, watch this. It's on hand. <laughs> you get it? When he says the kingdom of God is at hand or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Bridget, I'm ready now. <laughs> I did my job. Go to John 18, 36, and I'll end with this. I love the fact that when the glory of God came upon him, that it wasn't about the glory coming upon his face. The glory of God is not, the glory of God doesn't come in our services to be on our face. The glory of God comes in to be on our hearts and to change us. It's one good thing to have the presence, but it's another good thing to be changed in his presence. <laughs> Let me give you this and I'm done. The kingdom of God, it said Jesus answered, it said my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom, here it is, is not of this world. His kingdom. You know when he says, my kingdom is not of this world, this is what he means. How can you love a man who you don't see? Let me say it this way, especially to, to those of you who've been in relationships and things and God starts to change you. How can you give up a man you do see <laughs> for a man you don't see? How can you give up the tangible things and believe more in the spiritual things? It doesn't make sense to take you out of the suburbs and put you in the hood. To them, it doesn't. But to him, it does. That's why he says, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom don't make sense to you. It's not meant to. My kingdom. My kingdom says, love those who have despitefully used you. God, I felt that. <laughs> because according to this world, I'm not supposed to forgive you. According to this world, I'm not supposed to have anything dealing with unsavory people. But my kingdom says, if my brother's hungry, feed him. God, whew, I feel the glory. How many can feel God in here now? My kingdom. My kingdom says we shall walk by faith. <laughs> You're going to play with me this morning, but I love his word. That's his kingdom. See, because see, the world's kingdom says, watch, that I'm not supposed to move until it makes sense. But even Indiana Jones had enough sense to know if I step out and I see nothing, something's going to appear. That's only for my Indiana Jones people. They don't know what I'm talking about. 
right? He said, my kingdom is not of this world. So here it is and I'm done. Lord, let your kingdom be in me. Let your kingdom be in me. I want to love like you love. I want to know like you know. I want your kingdom in me. I want to see things the way you see things, through the lens of the kingdom. And not through the lens of Chris. I want to gauge things by the way that you gauge them, not the way I gauge them. And I can admit I've fallen short sometimes on that task. And so now I repent because I understand what the kingdom is now a little bit better. So, when you say the kingdom is at hand, let it be in me. Whatever you need me to do. Whatever you want me to do. Wherever you lead me to go. Whoever you tell me to encourage and pray for and love on. Even if it's those that hurt me. You love those that hurt you. That's your kingdom. Let it be in me. If I'm talking to you today, can you stand on your feet? I just want to pray with you. I'm not going to pray on you. I'm just going to pray with you. And I'm done. Father, I thank you. Ah. Father, I bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, let your kingdom be in me. Be in me. See, I hear that. <laughs> Lord, let your kingdom be in me. Be in me. So, Father, right now, I pray for my brothers and my sisters. I pray even for me, God. Because according to your word, the kingdom, your kingdom is at hand. It is something that you're requiring in me because you said that the kingdom, your kingdom is in us. So, Lord, Lord, I pray right now that your kingdom come, <laughs> that thy will be done in me and on earth through me. So, Father, here I am. Not my will, but let thy will be done today. Father, I just want to represent your kingdom. And I thank you in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I empty out that you may fill me up. None of me and all of you. None of me, but all of you. Father, forgive me that I've fallen short of showing and displaying your kingdom. But, Father, thank you for another chance. Thank you for the, another chance, Father, to be able to show your love, kindness, your grace, and your mercy. So, Father, here I am. Lead me and guide me in the way I should go. And I give you praise. And I give you honor. And I give you glory. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray for the person standing next to me. That, Father, that you would meet every need in their life. And that all of us in this room would reflect, resemble, and reveal you. Father, I praise you and I thank you. And I'm going to seal it with the praise because I know it's already done. It is so, and so it is. In Jesus' name. Somebody take 10 seconds and give God the best praise you got right now. Come on.
Come on, you got 10 seconds. You got 10 seconds. Come on, you got 10 seconds. Everybody in here, look at your hands and say the kingdom of God. Come on, I need to hear you. Say the kingdom of God is in my hands. Say the kingdom of God is in my hands. Now for the Holy Ghost. Say the kingdom of God is in my hands now give God a hand praise father I lift up my brother pastor Jimmy and his family I thank you for his life I thank you for his ministry I thank you father for his assignment and his migration now father rejuvenate his mind rejuvenate his body rejuvenate his spirit allow him to see new dreams and new visions that when he comes back here that father that he has fresh oil that he has fresh oil to serve you and your people Thank you for his wife. Strengthen her as she stands next to him. Give her everything she needs for herself and for him and the children. Bless his children. Give them grace. Because it's not easy being pastor's kids. Touch them. Open up doors for them. Bless their lives in a crazy special way. And we'll give you praise, honor, and glory. We thank you for our leader. We thank you for our pastor. In Jesus' name, bring them home safe the same way you took them there. And we'll give you all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Come on, God bless you.
going to join together in the benediction. We are a community of disciples of Jesus Christ, embodying the power and the giftings of the Holy Spirit, cultivating space for healing, and living in and expanding God's kingdom on earth. Go in peace. Go expand God's kingdom on earth.